Microsoft is upgrading its search engine Bing with more artificial intelligence. The company says it's now working with startup OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. Microsoft's announcement comes as a race for AI ramps up. Earlier this week, Google announced it'll also release its own AI chatbot called Bard. Here to discuss is Will Knight. He's a senior writer covering AI at Wired. Good morning. Thanks so much for making time, Will. Morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's start with the why. Why are we seeing this new push, this race for tech companies to really integrate AI in their next generation of tech? Yeah, well, there's, so there's been these advances in AI recently around very large language models. And, and then we saw this explosive interest in something called ChatGPT, which is what Microsoft is using to update Bing. And it's, a, it's basically a chatbot that is unlike any we've used before. It's able to answer questions in ways that are really, really coherent. It can dig up information and you know, produce these, these answers which really feel kind of magical. And so the, the idea that everybody has is that this could change the way we do web search, which obviously is a you know $100 billion industry plus per year. So, But we're really probably seeing the beginning of a, of a much bigger race between tech titans when it comes to this, this kind of AI. So we know that Google also has its own product, right? Give us an idea of what the future of a, a search engine will be then, because it's obviously not going to be, you know, looking up a Yelp review for my favorite restaurant anymore. They're expecting these search engines to do much more than that. Yeah, so the future that they have in mind is where this AI would, you know, collate reviews from several sites, um, figure out, you know, the, the exact information you want and present it to you in a really coherent way as if it was written by a person. Uh, the, you know, they're it really remains to be seen exactly how well it's going to work. They've been demoing some stuff and people have been using chat GPT, but it's not been without its problems. So I think the, the exciting thing is like for users to get their hands on, on Bing and, you know, this updated chatbot from Google um, to see how they actually work and see if that really does make search that much better. Um, but yeah, we're going to see, we're going to see something quite different, I think, going forwards. Uh, CBS Morning's Tony DeCopel sat down with Microsoft CEO uh, and asked him about concerns for bias in AI uh, and how someone would even begin to police a chat like that. Uh, let's take a listen. This is where human agency is at a premium. Uh, you will always be able to trip any new AI model uh, because you prompted it. So I think we should start with the responsibility each of us as users have to take. And yes, we will have many, many mechanisms to ensure that nothing biased, nothing harmful gets generated. So we'll talk about that for a minute, the implications of this technology. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I'm glad you asked that, that question of Satya because these, these tools are... Um, essentially large algorithms that just predict text when you give it a prompt. So they'll they'll do sort of whatever you want. And um, people have been able to get them to, you know, generate a phishing email or, you know, write the code for a virus, which is concerning, obviously. And because they, they are trained by scraping data from the web, they can also just inherit these biases that people put out there or, or, or hurtful language. Um, so it is a real a real issue. And how you're going to deal with that is, is kind of an open question. I've seen some of the answers that they've given with Bing, and it, it seems like they've, they've fixed some issues. They've maybe done that kind of manually, but potentially it's not quite clear, but it's a real challenge. And I think this is you know, going to be part of the race is how you make sure that these, these models, which are kind of amazing, but also unpredictable, actually behave. You know, Microsoft CEO was really, really into this. Uh, but when he talks about it, it seems like it's about getting more work out of the human beings. <laughs> the other concern is, is this going to either take our jobs, Chanel and I's jobs, <laughs> or, you know, is it going to mean we're all working harder because the expectation is that the software can do some of the base work? Well, that's a, that's another great question. I think that's a concern that loads of people have. I certainly have as a as a writer, you know, and, and plenty of people do. I doubt it will take your jobs because it it, it can't uh, yet get on the screen and, and present things. But yet, um, <laughs> I, I think that, I, well, thankfully, yeah. But I think the reality is, um, you know, we're already seeing some people use these tools, and it seems to be sort of changing the way jobs operate rather than replacing people wholesale because you know, as, as Satya said, and as you said, that you have to keep an eye on these models. So it may just mean that people you know, have to learn to use these tools just as we learned to use previous ones. But the, the interesting thing is we, you know, they are much more unpredictable. We don't know quite how well they're going to behave or miss or how they're going to misbehave. So, so um, I think it's still somewhat an open question though, as well, you know, how much it will replace people, how that'll affect the economy. Um, but certainly VCs are pouring money into this. They, they see it affecting all sorts of industries. So I would say, yeah. you know, try and use these tools and, and learn about them if you can. Yeah. Will Knight, thank you very much. Thank you.